In this series, we'll be using an adult to play the part of the child. We want you to be focusing on the skills that you're going to be teaching them. So your attention should be mostly on me as I model these things with the child. Today we're going to talk about object manipulation during toy play. We'll be demonstrating how to teach your child to use different items in a play set using this train set. We'll be showing you how to put trains on a track and push them, how to add pieces of the track to complete the track, and how to add scenery props to it. Um, we'll also be giving you suggestions on what to do if your child struggles with any of the steps. Let's start with pushing the first train around the track. We're going to start making it the easiest by having the train already on the track and I will model pushing it around. Um, if your child can already push the train correctly around the track, you can show them how to add a second train. Yeah, here they come! Around they go! Once they can do that, the next thing that we're going to show them is how to build the track. Um, and so we're going to do that by having the track mostly complete and starting with adding the final piece so that the very next thing that they can do is the skill they already have of pushing the train around the track, which they love. Oh no, there's a hole in the track. Let's fix it. Can you help me? Ah, we got it. Here comes the train. Um, once they can put the first track on, then we're going to add a second track um, because they'll need to be able to build the entire track in order to be able to play it by themselves. All right, here we go. We got two to add in. We got that first one. Here comes the second one. Yeah, you got it. If they're not able to do that or they're doing it incorrectly, there's some different ways that we can fix that. So I go to show them how to push the train around the track and they're not copying me. So the first thing I can try is um, to use my hands to show them. All right, here we go. Like we're going to push it around. Chook, 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 chook. Ooh, you got it. Look, it's going all the way around. Another thing that I can do is put it on there and once they're touching the train, I can use the train to move it around. There we go, around it goes. And um, if they have the skill of holding the train and putting it correctly on the track, but then they're not pushing it around and they're just holding it in place or maybe they slide it back and forth, one of the things that you can do is move the track. Oh, here goes the train. Look, it's going all the way around. Ooh, it's coming back to you. You got it. When we go to put the pieces of the track in, you're going to encounter some other difficulties. For example, how to fit the peg in and slot it correctly and put the pieces in. So again, we want to make this as easy as possible. So um, if I present it, and they really don't know what to do with it. I'm going to do most of the steps myself and then have them help me finish at the last point. All right, let's get that on here. Look, it's almost finished. Can you help me? Oh, there we go. Here comes the train. Um, if they can do that, then we're going to take it back a step and I'll put one over here and then give it to them to help me finish the last two. One. Oh, here he comes. Um, if they can do that and they're ready for two pieces, keep in mind that if you give them two pieces, they might not be sure what to do with it or they might put it together incorrectly. That would be really frustrating for your child and we want to make this as easy as possible. So I would present them with one piece at a time and not give them both pieces even if they know how to put it together correctly. There you go, look at that, it's ready to go.
Now we're ready to add in some accessories to our track. We have a water tower and a conductor, a tree, and a speed limit sign. So the trains are already on the track. They know how to push them. They know how to put the tracks together. Now we're going to add some pieces. All right. Oh, this is so much fun. Let's make our train filled up with water. Here's our water tower. And we need a speed sign. Can you help me put that one out? Let's see where we're going to put that one. There it is. And how about a tree? I'm going to put the conductor over here. Oh, you got it. Woohoo. Oh, 55 miles an hour. You can go a little faster. Let's stop for some water. We got it. Um, now, if you give your child the piece and they don't know what to do with it, um, you can do the same type of help that you gave them earlier with the track of guiding their hand or holding onto the piece and putting the piece in a place with them holding it so that it's easy for them to um, for them to set it down. And it's nice to have several other pieces so that once they can do that, you can hand them one or two more and see where they put them on their own. Ooh, I like the tree over there. It's nice and shady. Then once we're playing and we're having a great time, how do we know when to stop? Um, we want to make sure that this activity is fun and successful and we don't do it too long so that your child becomes bored and starts to wander away or they get frustrated with the pieces. So usually a few minutes of playing back and forth um, with things going well would be a good time to stop and move on to something else. Um, or if at the beginning, if they needed a lot of help putting the pieces together or putting the, um, putting the trains on the track, and now they're able to um, push it around by themselves without your help, again, we want to stop when they have made a little bit of progress but not push them to keep going because we want to keep it really successful.